Hello everyone, and welcome to the AV Biology Q&A. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some frequently asked questions that I get commonly from commenters on this channel or that I got a lot from my former students when I was teaching or even things that I see pop up in message boards and forums. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering questions specific to the AP Biology exam. I'll probably make another one of these in a very similar format that pertains to questions about students who are interested in the course and trying to decide if they wanna take the class or just curious about what happens in the class because I get a lot of those questions questions as well. But this one is for students who are already in the class, who are definitely taking the exam at the end of the year. And I'm just going to go through these questions, provide my answers. And if you have additional questions as we go through, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them in another video. I also have extensive videos on a lot of these topics already. So if those do exist, I'll direct you to those and put the link in the description of this video. All right, let's get started. So really common one I used to get all the time from my students when they were taking the class, even though I put it on the syllabus, the first day they were in the course is when is the exam? Now everybody, for the most part, takes the AP Biology exam at the same time. Uh, in 2024, when I'm recording this video, that date is Thursday, May 16th. Now this is kind of at the end of the AP exam cycle, so you may be a little tired after taking other AP exams if you're enrolled in other AP courses. And this year it is scheduled for 12 noon. Now that wasn't always the case, it used to be an 8 a.m. exam. They've changed it, so if you're watching this video in a year that's not 2024, be sure to check that out. But no matter where you are, local time, 12 noon, that's when the AP bio exam is. Now, uh, follow up to this question is what happens if I'm sick on the day of the exam or I can't make that time? Well, usually there is a makeup exam for students who truly do have a health reason for not being able to be there on the day of. If you just don't feel prepared to take the exam, uh, you still are going to have to take it on that day. It is very unlikely your school will grant you an extension. And the people who take the makeup exam have a different version of the exam than what is released to most other students who take it on the official exam day. Now, another follow-up question to that is, will you be able to see the questions on the exam or how you did or your score? So I'll try to answer all of those together. Uh, your scores are released later in the summer, so several months after you take the AP Biology exam. How they're graded is really interesting. They actually send a bunch of AP Biology teachers together to congregate in one place for over a week and they look at all the exams and you have people in charge of grading lots and lots of free response questions all at once. And then from there, they calculate your total score combined with the multiple choice, which is all you see in your College Board portal uh, and your official exam score. So you don't get to see how you did on the FRQs or which questions you missed on the final exam. You will, however, be able to look at the free response questions and talk about them with your peers several days after the exam. So typically a few days after the exam, the free response questions are least and everybody starts talking about them uh, to kind of figure out how they did and figure out what the answers are and then after the AP reading which is that place where all the teachers go to grade the exam then the scoring guidelines are released which is the answer key several months later so later on you will be able to see how points were given on the exam and what the exact right answers were now backing up a little bit another common question is what's the format of the exam so as I alluded to already there are free response questions and multiple choice questions these are broken up into two separate sections so the entire exam is three hours long. You do get a break in between the two sections. So you have a 90 minute multiple choice section and then a 90 minute free response section. On the multiple choice section, you will get multiple choice questions with four answer responses on every question. And there are 60 of those on that section. On the free response section, there are six free response questions, two long ones, four short. And within each of those questions, you will see the question broken up into different subsections. So A, B, C, D, for example. Each part is scored equally. So the multiple choice part counts for 50% of your grade and the free response part counts for 50% of your grade. So both parts are really important for when you're preparing for the exam. The free response section is a bunch of questions that you do have to handwrite. So you have to write out your answer choices by hand on paper. Sometimes you might have to draw a small thing on an answer space where there'd be a diagram and there is an opportunity to do a graph related question on one of the long free response questions. So there's a high likelihood you will be creating a graph on the exam as well. 
Moving back to the multiple choice, a lot of students ask like what kind of questions are going to show up. Um, they are standard multiple choice questions, so you'll get A, B, C, and D, like I said before. Some of the questions will have visual responses as your answer, so you might be asked to select the graph that best represents the data that they're referring to. You might ask to select a molecule or a diagram of a molecule that best pertains to what's being asked. But most of the times the answer choices are text-based and a lot of the time these are questions that are stimulus-based or have a stem. And this part of the question is something that you have to read or a diagram you have to look at that tells you about a specific scientific phenomenon and then you use your knowledge in AP Biology to answer the question. Sometimes there are hints within these stems that can help you better answer the question, but very frequently you will see a particular experimental setup where an experiment is described, you see a data table, you might even see a diagram or a graph, and then there's a set of several questions after that, several multiple choice questions that all pertain to that same phenomenon or experiment. It is very common on the AP Biology exam, both on the multiple choice section and on the free response se section, to see questions that deal with topics that you haven't learned about, but you should still be able to answer correctly based on your knowledge of different concepts in AP Biology or science practices. This is what can trip a lot of students up, is seeing things that they've never heard of before, seeing vocabulary words for proteins that they have no idea what they do or why they're seeing this particular word on the paper, but it is meant to test your knowledge in a specific way. So if you see something you've never learned about before, don't freak out, it's part of the exam and it's meant to test you. Another question I get is, are there formulas to memorize? And there are formulas that you will probably need to apply on the AP Biology exam, things like Hardy-Weinberg, chi-square equilibrium, but you actually get a formula sheet provided to you on the day of the exam. So you should familiarize yourself with the formulas on that formula sheet before going into the exam so you know how to apply the formulas, but there really aren't any specific formulas that you have to have memorized for the exam. However, it is important to know what 2PQ means for example, in the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, if, if you've never used that equation before, it's going to be tough to apply it on the exam if you don't have any practice. Similar question is, do I have to memorize any labs for the exam? And the answer is no, there are no specific labs that you have to have memorized. You do need to know how to conduct a good experiment, uh, formulate an experimental question, identify a hypothesis, a null hypothesis, basically just general experimental design. You might be asked what a control is in experiment, but there is no particular lab that you were supposed to do in class that you will be tested on on the AP Bio exam, and that's really important. So you might have done different labs than another student did in a different state or at a different school from you, because in AP Biology, teachers are provided with suggested labs, but they can do whatever labs that they choose they think will best illustrate the concepts that you're learning in class. Now, everybody is tested on the same core curriculum. Uh, it's part of what's called the CED course and exam description, so you can actually look up all the content that will be fair game on the exam. I'll put a link to that in the the description is uh, below as well, uh, but none of these things are actually specific labs. So don't waste your time memorizing every single different variable that you did or performed in all of your labs throughout the year. Be more familiar with how to design a good experiment. Another question I get a lot is what is the best way to study? Uh, the short answer is active studying methods that are going to pertain to content that will show up on the exam. The long answer is I have a lot of videos covering uh, study tips and strategies for AP Biology. Uh, practice questions, flashcards, always good, uh, active recall exercises, um, which leads us into our next question is where do I find practice questions? And there's a lot of places to look. The number one place is to review with questions from old released exams. Now, if you're studying for AP Biology now in 2024 or beyond, there are different practice questions available on the College Board's website that are in pretty much the same format that you're gonna see on the exam coming up. Now, there are some slight variations year to year. They're actually breaking up some of the free response long text that you have to read, but the type of questions and the way they're written will be the same. So if you look at anything from 2020 and beyond, that should be the types of free response that are gonna show up on your exam. There's also the College Board's online portal where your teacher can assign you practice questions and your teacher has access to released full exams that they may give you in class or they may allow you to practice on if you ask them. So it's always a good idea to ask your teacher if you can practice with the practice materials that they have access to that you might not or ask them to assign you more practice questions if you can get them straight from the source. If you're looking for practice questions that are not directly from the College Board, there's tons of places you can go. There's lots of review books out there. I have another video on 
how to choose a good review book and the one that might be a be the best fit for you. And obviously there's lots of online sites, Khan Academy, old release tests from your class. Those are all good places to look for practice questions. I do have a full video on how to find good AP Biology practice questions if you're interested in learning more about that. All right, so moving into some specifics about the FRQs or free response questions, uh, a lot of students ask, can I get partial credit on the answers? And the answer is yes. Uh, several of the questions are worth many points. And so if you get maybe one part of the answer correct, you can get a few points, but you may not get all of them. So it's not an all or nothing scenario for each of the individual questions. Another question I get is, do I have to label the answers? So for example, you'll have question four and then A, B, C, D. Do you have to label the individual A, B, C, D sections as you're answering? And you don't have to, it is actually helpful for the graders or the readers of your AP exam. So if you wanna put that little A in your answer choice, but do remember all answers have to be given in complete sentences. You cannot give bullet point responses on the AP biology exam, but don't waste your time writing these really flowery paragraphs with thesis statements and introductory lines that restate the question. Just get straight to the answer choice using correct grammar and writing in a complete sentence. Another question I get for the FRQs is what happens if I run out of time? A lot of students get really stressed because they think, okay, 90 minutes sounds like a lot of time, but then when they see the length of some of these questions, that 90 minutes can go by very fast. Um, and the short answer is if you run out of time, you run out of time and your exam is graded as is. So a strategy for that I recommend is try to answer things that you know right off the bat. There used to be a reading period as part of the AP Biology exam and so you can still build that into your answer period. So take 10 minutes, read through all the questions, all six of the free response questions, and then choose a plan of attack, answer, answering them in the order that you think best demonstrates your knowledge. Remember the first two are actually more points than the other ones. So if you wanna get some of the points out of those, you can focus on those, um, but it is really good to strategize by answering questions that you know you know early on and then leaving space to answer the ones that you're gonna have a harder time on or will take you longer later. Another question I get is what happens if I fail the AP exam? So your AP score is not related to your course grade. And who sees your AP score is just your teacher and then the rest is up to you. You can share it with others, you can keep it completely private. If you wanted to send your score to a college or university and you opted to do that before you took the exam, and then later on you feel like, oh, I don't want colleges and universities to see that, you can go on the College Board website and actually elect to withhold that score from the universities and colleges that you selected already. Your teacher will see how you did, but it should not have an effect on your course grade. In fact, the AP scores are often released late in the summer, so you should have already gotten your school grade for the year by the time the AP scores come out. So even if you get an A plus in the class and a one on the exam, you should not fail the class and your GPA will be just fine. Okay, so that was just a bunch of questions that I get from students very commonly about the AP exam for biology. If you have others related to the exam, please let me know in the comments. I'm also planning on doing another one of these Q&A videos just related to the course in general, who should take the class, what the class is all about, how hard is it? So if you have questions like that, feel free to drop them in the comments of this video or any of my others. Be sure to give this video a like if it's been helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.